ducked off low key. Yeah, you know me. Kick it with Tyree, hit a three like Kyrie. All right, guys. Thank you guys for tuning in to Kicking It with Tyree. I'm here with Darren Rita. We're here. We're out here. Yeah. Let's get it started, man. How you doing today? I'm I'm living, man. I'm chilling. How are you? You're... This is a good Sunday, you know. Good, yeah. Nice, relaxing Sunday. We're vibing. We're in the back cave here. I dig it. I dig yeah. the, I dig <laughs> that, the vibes. That might, that might have to be the studio name now. Yeah, the back cave. Dude. Yeah, come on. Yeah, man. So uh, I just always start with this first question. Like, how did you get into? I know you do a lot of different things, but music is one of the main things. Yeah. How did you get into music? Um, for me personally, I, I'd always like, I feel like everybody, when they get asked that question, it's like, oh man, I've, I've always been into music. I've always been into it. And I was, my family was like a very musical family where my, my dad was listening to a lot of hip hop and rock. My mom would listen to a lot more like pop and, um, and yeah, and some rock too. And then I just kind of grew up with that influence, but I never really started making any kind of music. I used to write raps in high school with some friends of mine, but like cringy white kid rapping in high school you know and it's like it wasn't we weren't doing anything with it but then um as i was graduating high school um my like second mom if you will a friend's mom that i, I stayed at their house a lot she uh she knew that i was like interested in creative stuff and then i was like considering doing that and so as like a gift gave um me and my best friend at the time uh they got us like couple hundred dollars worth of like gear to just like try to make something and so i spent like the whole summer trying to make music and that was like 2017 so it was like right when i was leaving high school um and then yeah i've just been doing it ever since so that's dope so how has the journey from 2017 to now how have you seen I, honestly yeah just music change in the accessibility of making music change well it's a, it's a lot cheaper now yeah. which is awesome i mean there's i wish I actually, I'm glad. I, I always joke with like younger uh, kids that'll like reach out that like maybe went to the same high school as me or went to like even here in Milwaukee that'll reach out and be like, I want to start doing music. I want to start doing whatever. What should I do? And now they have like band lab, which is free. And like, mm -hmm. dude, I've seen people with just the iPhone headphones yeah, just record it. And that. if you got a good, you know, a good mix and master on there, like, it, it sounds sound passable, yeah. dude. It sounds passable. Yeah. So like I always joke, I'm like, dude, I wish I had that when I was, you know, 16, 15, 16, but I'm actually really glad I didn't because I was I was asked then. And mm. it would have <laughs> then it would have been documented way more that I was how ass I was. So yeah. uh, I'm glad I didn't. But yeah, dude, it's cool. I think it's really cool. You can get a micro a decent microphone for really cheap. Uh DAWs are becoming like way more user friendly. Um, I just, I think it's good. I think the more people that can make music, it's going to have like force people to, to make better stuff because the better stuff's going to rise, you know? Yeah. And with equipment, with anything, like it's just going to get cheaper. There's going to be different companies trying to outplay the shore mics, yeah. the bigger companies mics, just so they can get your 30 bucks or your 40 bucks. Oh yeah. Even though it's going to break in a year. Which yeah. you got a you yeah, got a year. Yeah. You got well, at least a year. Well, I think it's too. I mean, just like a, a great how I like joke and, and tell people about it all the time is like I'm recording on like the mics that like Joe Rogan uses mm -hmm. or whatever, like the SM seven Bs, like that's the same microphone that Michael Jackson was recording thriller with. Mm-hmm. And I can get that yeah. for four hundred bucks. You know, and like I know, and, and that's it used that's, to be like ten. 10 that's what I'm saying. Dollars. Yeah, so. and people would be like four hundred bucks. That's expensive. I'm like, dude, if you knew how much that that mic was when Michael Jackson was using it, <laughs> I mean, it just yeah. So it's crazy to think that that kind of stuff. It's still the same quality. So things are just going to keep getting better, and the stuff that's that we have right now is already amazing. So that stuff's just going to keep getting cheaper, and I think that's a really good thing for anybody that's trying to get into creative stuff. Yeah, and. Honestly, this is going to get easier and easier. Cameras are going to get cheaper. As they should, And the yeah. best cameras that are out right now are going to be dirt cheap in five years. Can you imagine that, They dude? just keep trying to jump yeah. the next barrier. Like, how can we make this camera better? Have, Even though you're not necessarily making it better, you're yeah. just, like, putting better Have you seen – you're a, you're a video guy, so I, I'm, I'm curious your thoughts on the, uh, the DJI um, – what is it? The Ronin 4D. Have you seen that? Yeah, I've seen. I've seen that in. Have you got action. to? Have you got to touch any of that? I you got to use it at all? It, but I've okay. seen it in action. Yeah. I think it was like, was it? It was like last October. Yeah. There was like this studio from LA that came into Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Actually, I got called up to do something on a set yeah. for a theater production. It was like a pretty much like a musical, and okay. the guy was using it on a musical, dude. Yeah, on a musical. So it was like a theatrical musical. Yeah. So like. They're gonna try and put it out as put like it out a as like a film or, or film something, or something some like capacity. that. Okay. And so I see him using. I'm like, that looks amazing. And he starts telling me about it. Yeah. Like 
is actually pretty cheap for like how good it, it that's is. What, well, that's what I try like, to tell people. I'm like, like if it's like 10 or 11 grand or something for mm-hmm. that. But if you look at what it, it's a cine, full cinema camera. Yep. And it's it's a built-in gimbal. It's got like a wireless uh, monitor that's got LiDAR, mm-hmm. like focus polling and all this stuff. Like there's so many it's, things that it can do. It's amazing, honestly. It was a, it looked amazing too because I was watching it back like on the, uh, the monitors and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. And it just, I was like, wow. Yeah. How fast technology is coming forward. Even because I started around 2017 as well. Mm-hmm. And I started with just the 6D. Yeah, That's all you need, bro. That's all you need I to had, start. Uh, the, f- the Canon T6. T6. That's T6, right. okay. T6. And then I moved on to a Sony A6300. A How you prefer? Uh, and then, you, I, I know you've got a couple Sonys now, so I imagine Sony won you over. You like yeah, the interfaces Sony, a little bit better? Sony was the best camera I had or best interface. And just working with the files is always better with Sony just because... You're not having a hassle with like, with the Black Magic. Let's say you shoot yeah. for a couple of days on a documentary or something like that. Yeah, it's gonna be about two terabytes of footage, possibly. Easily, <laughs> easily, dude. On the Black and Magic, you yeah. need so much like space to even handle that. Yeah, like you need a certain computer to handle it, like to its fullest extent. And in certain, and, you gotta, yeah, you, you have to, especially if you shoot like raw and stuff, mm-hmm. like you gotta have the right software to be able yeah. to even color grade that <laughs> stuff. Like that's what, I mean, it's maybe this is gonna be kind of filmy for mm-hmm. people that aren't in that sphere, but like that, there's a lot of hurdles with using nicer stuff. That's yeah. like, people think you just buy the nicest thing and it gets and easier. And even with like the Black Magic, the nicest cameras, you need the nicest everything that goes with exactly. it. Exactly. You need the nicest lenses, you need the nicest SD cards that are $1,000. Yeah. I had a $400 SD card just God. shit the bed on me in at Sundance. I'm so, so sorry. So we're dude. filming Sundance. <laughs> And I'm like, why is it glitching out? Like the the footage yeah. is glitching out. Like, yeah. I'm like, why is it doing this? And I go up to somebody else who's filming with a black magic. He was like, yeah, I think your SD card is one shit. It was like, damn. I'm like, damn. He was like, you're gonna have to shoot in like super low res, really, to even like get clear footage now. And I'm like, I should have just brought my Sony. Yeah, dude. That's <laughs> like, what I don't know, man. That's what like yeah. if you find it, something that works, yeah. I say use I it. Just stick with beat it, it into honestly, the ground until you're on that level. You they rent anyway, so it's yeah. like when you're a bigger level, like big level cinematographer. Most of the time, you're renting the camera. Yeah. Like most of them have like their go to camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've had for ten years, and then they rent a red or because yeah, because like a client stuff. wants it or because you're doing something bigger. Yeah, as yeah. you should. There's no reason to. There's own no it. reason to own it anymore because yeah. everything's moving every year. Yeah, and if you want to own it. Cool. Good for yeah. you. Yeah. My ego but. wants me to own it really badly. It, um, but your bank account does not. No, my bank account doesn't. That's what, dude, even, that's funny that you mentioned like the, the Sundance story. I had a similar thing when mm-hmm. I got, like when I upgraded all my microphones in studio and everything, we get all these Shure SM7Bs. I had been having some audio issues mm-hmm. and I was like, oh, thank God. I've got these nicer microphones. Going to be picking up way less background noise. Cause I was, I was doing the show out of my mom's basement for the longest time. Yeah. No, like very that's little sound it. treatment. Like, I mean, my mom, you know, she would be doing whatever upstairs, maybe run the dishwasher and we would hear it. And I'd be like, God damn it. So I was like, I'm so excited to get these new mics. And the first week I got them, I forget who I had on as a guest that week. And I was super pumped about it. And I plug everything in. I'm doing mic checks about like an hour before the show and I'm getting nothing. And then I found out the SM7B, as great and powerful as it is, Mm -hmm. it's not going to pick up anything else around it. It's a very quiet mic. You need clean gain for that mic. I'm cranking the gain all the way up on my he's gonna focus right and i'm like why why is this not going up and uh then i like i'm looking up like real quickly the first search bar was like why is sm7b <laughs> not picking it went right to oh you need this other piece okay this other 150 dollars piece it's a cloud lifter basically gives it like uh clean like 50 dbs of gain okay and, and but then, it was like before an episode so then i was like Fuck, and i had to go can't find just go buy it no you, so you i had just... to go find my old mics that i had was like getting ready to you know, get rid of and then hook everything else up again. And so it's like the same kind of thing. You get the nicer thing. You think, oh, I leveled up. <laughs> but you didn't level up yet. All of a sudden you forget <laughs> that you need all types of stuff. Uh, yeah. Talking about the podcast. So what made you start your podcast? And you've been doing it, you said 270? 
This is uh, we episode? just filmed the 241st week in a row. Nice. Uh, last week we had the Milverino on last week, which was fun. Um, he's <laughs> he's a character man. Yeah, I bet uh, he's <laughs> like, he's hilarious. He walks around as war, like Wolverine. Yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah, he's he hilarious. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, yeah. I've been doing that for like 200 well 241 weeks now, and I just I always I loved podcasting in high school. Mm. Like I would watch and listen to a bunch of them, and um, kind of would always try to like put my friends on a different podcast that I was listening to. I loved um. Specifically, I'd listen to like the Breakfast Club uh, on my way to like morning lift. I used to work out with the football team in high school. And then I would listen to the Brilliant Idiots podcast with yep. Andrew Schultz and Charlemagne the God. And they were like, I just, I just loved listening to that every week. And then um, I had like thought about doing one my senior year of high school and um, kind of like started looking at what it would take to do that. But I was, I just got too like focused on the music and it was great. I mean, it was good to start doing that. And then when I was in college, I was, I played college basketball for two years and I had a little bit of free time towards the second semester. My, I played for two years. And so my second semester of my last year, done playing ba ball, ball season wraps up and I got like all this free time now. And I'm like, I think yeah. it's time, bro. Like I got yeah, these that, mics that already for music. January, uh, yeah. When you're playing basketball in college, after yeah. like the January, February. Yeah, dude. When you're like, oh, I got all this time. I don't have to be up at six in the morning. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> so I was I just do? like, all right, well, I have all this stuff already. Mm -hmm. Like, let's let's try to do this. So I, I did a couple like practice ones with some friends of mine that I will never see the light of day and they shouldn't. Um, yes. But uh, just to get the idea of like, okay, this is how it works. And then um, it ended up still being about like another, I want to say eight months until I started it. But okay. but then, yeah, we started it soon thereafter and haven't missed a week. So That's dope. 241 weeks in a row. In a row, that's bro. That's where I've been at every Monday. Many, many <laughs> years, you know? Like, yeah, over four, over yeah, four now. That's, that's a lot of dedication. When I started, I started in 2017. So it was like, I only, I had the T6. Mm -hmm. And then I rented a camera from our college's uh, library. Oh, there Never you go. brought it back the whole year. I used the whole year. Yeah, why not? No one else is using it, dude. No one, <laughs> no else one even using... knew it was there, honestly. Yeah, like, they, they didn't even call it. me. Like, they, that's really? how, they, didn't they never call called it. me nothing about it. Like, God damn. Bro. It was wild. And then I had this super old, like, Canon like, D mini DV camera. Like, and I used that. Oh, so wow. It's like, so it was like, I was like, oh, I want three yeah. camera angles, you know, yeah. and it was awful. Like, I, I did it yeah. in my basement in my college house. It has it to be like, awful when you start. I was That's like, yeah, I'm the never best. doing this again. <laughs> yeah. We ended up moving to this, uh, the, like, we had a music department, so we had a recording studio, and I was a music minor, hmm. so I was able to have access to it Yeah. if I booked it out. Okay. Every, pretty much similar as every Sunday. I was yeah. like, oh. I'm just going to do noon to eight. I know no one's going to the studio on Sundays because they don't want to do anything. Yeah. yeah so I yeah, just booked yeah. it out every Sunday and kind of probably went like the next whole semester doing it that way. And then I kind of switched up when I came back to Milwaukee during the summer. And it yeah. Was, it was kind of a little hectic at that point. It was yeah. like I was going everywhere just like, where are you at? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you were just like pulling up on people yeah, and doing it that way. Up and doing that, do it that way. Yeah, we do that sometimes. I broke yeah. a monitor this last year doing that on a shoot. Mm. We brought because we again. I was telling you before we go went live that uh, we live edit a lot of our shows. Yeah. And um, so I had my uh, producer buddy come with me, and we were getting set up to shoot um, on location at somebody. Uh, um, Nathan Clemens, a buddy of mine, owns a comedy cabin in Janesville, so he owns his own okay. comedy club. So we went there to go shoot with him, and. I'm getting everything set up and I'm not sure if if this is what happened or not. It either broke in the car or when my homie was setting up setting yeah. it up because there was like some screws on the back of it and I had brought the stand because I have like a three monitor set up in my regular studio. So he's trying to take like the shoe off so that he can put the regular stand on. And he was like pushing down on it real hard to try to get these yeah. screws were stripped out of it. And I'm like, I don't think that's good for the screen, man. And we turned it on <laughs> and half the screen, the pixels are dead. Yeah. And I'm not blaming him. I, I'm sure he would swear he didn't do it. I, it probably was in the car on the yeah. way there, but it, not a good look, man. We did no that whole knows. episode with no, half a screen. Whenever something breaks, no one knows how it happened yeah. ever yeah. in life. <laughs> it's fun though. It's fun. I've broken a couple monitors. Uh, These monitors are cheap now too. Talking yeah. about cheap equipment, they're yeah. getting cheaper. You know, I just bought a monitor for like a hundred bucks a couple of days ago, and it dies quick. That's I'm like, oh, maybe I should have bought the more expensive um, one. Mm -hmm. But it, if you have the right setup with 
a lot of different uh, plugins with the V mounts. Yeah, the V mounts and, and all the extra and power. You can power everything that way, but yeah. What's been I the toughest like, thing? I not to cut you. I didn't no, mean to cut you. Off. I was thinking um, my next question. Oh, okay, good. Well, I'll you're help good. you segue. I'll help you segue. <laughs> um, I'm curious. You know, somebody who who's been podcasting for a while now too. What uh, you mentioned, like starting out, and you kind of took a break for a minute. Mm -hmm. What was like the most difficult thing as a podcaster for you? Oh man, the every most time you show thing? up to do it, what's like the hardest thing? I'll say knowing if they're going to show up or not. Most of the really? sometimes people will say they're going to show up, and then like. They canceled like 30 minutes before. That was like at the beginning. And then once I got more into it and I was doing like a bunch of different episodes with people, I would just like start booking uh, backups. Yeah. So yeah. like no matter what. Who's I'd your have, backup for today? Who's the backup <laughs> for today? I didn't have one because oh, I knew you were coming. I was okay, like, oh, good. he's going to come. He already told me he's coming. Good, good, good. And back in the, but when I was doing it, like I would do like nine episodes of, like in that in Sunday. In a day? In a day. Doing it like Rogan does it. Where yeah, he just films like three or four in a row. I don't know how his brain is. Your brain is your... How do you feel after that? Uh, it was bad, but... Uh, Are you drinking water in yeah, between episodes? Yeah, you drinking episodes? water. It, you just got to stay focused. Sometimes it all mushes together, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You might accidentally ask somebody a question that you had. For, for, some, for a different <laughs> guest, you're like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but I always just like booked a bunch of people because I knew I only had that time to yeah. do it. So I'd be like, okay, if I book four people... And yeah. one doesn't come, I still got three interviews that I did. Yeah. And I can at least come back in a week or two and, and plan an extra yeah, one. Plan yeah. an extra one to keep it going. But I say the struggle has been just growing outside of like the city in a way. Mm. And trying to expand yeah. and get to new cities and yeah. Interview new people around across the country, you know, like Yeah. And that's been really the hardest part because it can take you so many places doing a podcast. Like, yeah, definitely. You can meet so many people, but how do you get the right people on the podcast and yeah. keep it moving, you know? No, I relate to that big time, man. Um, I know even for myself, you mentioned like people canceling, bro. That That's going to keep happening. Just <laughs> yeah, so, you know, until, until you're like until top of the top. And even those people, they have people cancel on them. So mm -hmm. it's like, dude, I have that all the time where it's, and and I'll say it right now, I'll say it for both of us right now. If you cancel on a podcast 30 minutes beforehand, you're bogus, <laughs> you're whack, and no one should work with you. Ever. That's terrible, It's, it's literally the worst thing you can do because... Especially you curate... I'm sure you've curated some questions for me today. Yeah. yeah. It took some time. You took scheduled time this out. Sit, you know, sit down and like look through your stuff and like make sure that I, I know who I'm coming to sit with. Yeah. And sometimes it's like, hey, all right, you canceled... But we're not doing it again. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to reach out and yeah. try and like schedule it again because you didn't respect my time first. No, time. it is disrespectful. <laughs> it is disrespectful. It's, there's no way, there's no other way to look at it. It's like if yeah. you, it's it's one thing, I've had it a few times where people um, will hit me up like the week before or, or mm. a couple days before and be like, yo, man, this came up. I don't have a car. This happened. Da, 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 da. I can't do it. But dude, if you hit me up the day of, it's Even gonna if, be if it's the day of, if I can maybe, if it's real early and you got a good reason, <laughs> but if it's any later than like a couple hours beforehand, get mm -hmm. the, I don't care. Whatever the excuse it's is, you will never be on the show. Yeah, it's never happening. It's <laughs> it will not, not happen. Yeah. And I should have, the, it literally happened to us uh, last week. Oh, really? It literally happened last week. God so damn. the thing is, I should have known it was a little weird because, okay, it was a, a dude who was a part of the dude's management team, mm. but like I always a little weary where I'm not talking to like the actual artist or like the actual yeah. person. I'm not going like, to lie to the management team. I've been hearing some weird management things yeah. around here. I mean, maybe I'm fortunate speaking from a place of privilege that I'm managing myself, I guess, mm -hmm. but I've been hearing some interesting stuff about like people's managers booking things for them and people not, not coming through. And yeah. Recently that's been a common theme. So. It is a common thing because they're not necessarily talking to their artists. They're just like trying to book it for them. And then they bring it up to them like, in the passing. day before. Yeah, they're like, like, hey, don't forget, you got this interview with Tyree tomorrow. And like, <laughs> it's like, oh, what? Uh, actually, no, bro, I got to do this instead. Yeah, and I think that's probably what happened is that dude was trying to book it for him and like trying to come through for him or something like that. And then he just dropped the ball pretty much. He probably had another thing to do, a video to shoot or something like that. You never know. Yeah. But how is um, kind of blending music and podcasting been um, working for you? Oh, uh, it's it's interesting because I don't really try to blend it much. I try. I mean, I have a lot of musicians on, so I mm -hmm. guess that would be like the crossover. And because I'm a musician, I can 
gladly will talk about things that have to do with music. Um, but I, I try to really just do um, as good of a job as I can as an artist when I'm creating, when I'm creating my music or creating art around the music. And then when I'm doing my podcasting, uh, I kind of just see that as like a separate hat that I'm wearing where it's like, I'm here. As I'm, I'm not host, so, yeah, you know? I'm a host and it's not so much like, a, I mean, in my show, it's not so much that I'm interviewing people. I mean, I do, but it's more like, we're just talking crap. Like we're mm -hmm. just talking shit to each other and I'm trying to make them laugh or say some really Something stupid. Crazy. <laughs> yeah. And so like that, that's more of what, what I'm trying to do with that. And then when it's the music, that's like me, I'm just trying to be as honest and authentic as I can when I'm making music and I make more like melodic pop stuff. So it's mm -hmm. like, um, just trying to find whatever's in here and, and let that, uh, get out the best way I can. So what would you say your, uh, like top influences were when you started, making music so what like artists yeah, yeah. kind of look to yeah i mean i definitely um i want to say like the people that like pushed me to start making music would probably be because it was like 2017 so i was following a lot of like russ's stuff at the time because he was talking about like this is how you do it this is how yeah. you be independent this is how, and i was like no way like no way can i just buy like there's no way i can look up like i can go get a microphone and record yeah. like just get some software for free or, or a free trial or whatever, and just like start making things. And so like that kind of pushed me to do it, but like, so, and, and I still love a lot of his music too. Um, and, and, but sonically, uh, I, I definitely, I love like the greats, like, like J, uh, Drake and J Cole were like, especially J Cole in high school, listened to a lot of J Cole. Um, and then, uh, like more musically, it was like Mike Posner, Black Bear. Uh, I'm trying to think like who other, pop what other pop singers i love ed sheeran's advice on songwriting too and i like a lot of his earlier stuff um mm -hmm. i just think this he's a beast at writing songs dude yeah. and he writes like while he's performing in front of stadiums i don't really? know if you've ever seen like, I've like never seen that, there's yeah. like clips of um i forget who it was i think it was benny blanco talking about how him and ed were working on a song before ed is going out to do this huge massive stadium and they're like working on a part and they can't get the bridge right and then ed like goes out does the whole show and he he just goes out stage himself and yeah. loops everything with a loop pedal and like plays the drum on his guitar, does the whole thing, comes back immediately off stage. He's like, "This is the bridge, I got it." And then they just like go back into recording. It's so like this dude is insane. <laughs> yeah, um, so he's probably thinking about it the entire time he's on stage. Yeah, like probably come going from his old songs and like, okay, that bridge yeah, worked yeah. here, like what makes people move, what makes people you know have yeah. a reaction to the music. Yeah. So the, the, so guys like that. I mean, it's a it's a pretty wide range where it's like real real hip hop stuff, and then obviously like more of the pop stuff as well. And I kind of just try to take that take that together and and have fun with it. So that's true. And you said you play basketball as well. Like, yeah. Uh, do you miss it? How long did you play basketball? And I'm st I still play. I don't um, play anything like serious. organized. <laughs> but I have. I'm usually so today actually. I, um, cause we were doing this and I had some other stuff going on. I didn't play, but usually I'm playing every Sunday with some yeah. guys. So I get some guys from my old college team and some guys, um, that just local dudes I know. So it's a good range where we got a couple people yeah. that maybe wouldn't play on a high school basketball team all the way up to some <laughs> real, real good hoopers some that play pro and stuff. Play. Yeah. So it's fun. You get a good mix and everybody's, it's a good group of guys. So usually yeah. I'm doing that on Sunday. So I still play every week and I've got a, uh, like an indoor court in my, in my place. So I, I just shoot there all the time, get my shots up. So that's so Got to keep his, I, you got to keep this strap on you. Yeah. You played as well, I imagine. Yeah, I, I played uh, all the way up until freshman year of college. And okay, then I kind of just played here and there, like played at the rec and played. Yeah, in the men's leagues and stuff like that. It's it's got to feel good for yeah. you though. This this some maybe you can relate to that. I don't get to talk to with a lot of people as somebody like the people that maybe you got to play against when you were playing at like the height mm -hmm. of when you were playing. You play against some really really good dudes, I imagine. Yeah, and now when you pull up to the Y. You're the really good dude. You're the dude. <laughs> and it's like, like you know, and, and I'm still, I'm st I don't know about you, but I'm still getting my shots if I still work out all the time. So it's like, I'm not like I'm a slouch or anything. Yeah. And so if it, I show up, it is funny to be like, oh, wow. Oh, you can hoop. Yeah. Because yeah. you, you do. Ever, you ever have like the moments where you're playing with uh, like, as artists, musicians and stuff like that. A lot of them didn't play, you know, Bro, but they like to play. They like to they play, like play but they and they like, to, play. they like to say they're balling like <laughs> insert any NBA player in a rap lyric. But I say if you can't make a left-handed layup with the right form, yeah. you're not allowed to rap I ball like blank. You yeah. can't do that, okay? You can't sing that. You can't rap that. If, if you, you cannot make a right left hand. Yeah, if you're shooting left-handed layups with your right hand or the foot's wrong, I don't want to yeah. hear it, bro. <laughs> I don't want to hear that. I but, definitely understand that. Yeah. Like, 
Man, I was we were talking about this on the last episode. Uh, we had a moment where it was like all the rappers in Milwaukee. I was listening to this, a, yeah. Uh, they it was just like one session. And I was like, oh yeah, like I'm thinking they're pretty. They're good. They were good. I yeah, would yeah. say athletic they're guys. Good. Maybe they were good for people who didn't probably play organized basketball yeah. when they were younger. Okay, yeah, <laughs> that that is saying something. But that's saying something. It's like a difference between people who have played organized basketball. And yeah. people who like have it. Like yeah. I've definitely learned that like as you got older, it's like, oh, I can tell who the people who never play like oh, yeah. organized never ran a play in their life. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, especially when you start trying to like tell them something like, yo, we can do this high pick and roll yeah. thing right here. And they're like, What? what? <laughs> Dude, or they just they just like set a down screen, you're like, like, that is hey, not man, set them a flare real quick. Yeah. <laughs> no, they <laughs> no. don't know what's that's, going on. Yeah, that's not yeah, what I'm saying. They only know their place from 2K, bro. And that's yeah, it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's it. And 2K that's my ISO. career. <laughs> yeah, 2K my career. They're trying to hit the right stick. Was, <laughs> yeah. That's not real life, man. Yeah, man. That's definitely the difference I've learned. Like, even in like the men's leagues and stuff like that. Oh, we'll yeah. be people who are like huge, they're tall. We were like all like average height. They're yeah. like, oh, they just never played like organized basketball. That's why they yeah. suck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You should be playing some dude. There's some you'll be playing in some men's leagues and there'll be some straight up giants in there, bro. Mm-hmm. Like some trees. Can't, can't move. Can't do shit though. <laughs> can't six do five thing. to six eight, and they can't make layups. No. Nope. And I'm like, you should be smoking everybody in this league. Everybody. Dude. I remember I was gardening, dude. What a bad hammy, hamstring. Yeah. Literally, like, probably a foot taller than me. It felt like he could not make the layup at all, though. Like, he literally... He's bouncing off the backboard <laughs> to himself. <laughs> he, he, to he himself. wide open, missed the layup. And I was like, oh, thank God. I grabbed the rebound. Let's Hell yeah, go. dude. I love that. Love <laughs> yeah, that for man. Him. Uh, so, what would you tell somebody who's never, like, seen your podcast what it's about? One oh, my second. God. Yeah. One sentence. I don't know about one sentence. about a lot of dumb stuff. That's what mm-hmm. I would say. Um, I, we're just trying to have as much fun as possible. I'm just trying to make people laugh, um, joke with them. Do you need me to stop? Are you good? No. You, You're good? Okay. I, I just know how it goes. So um, it's a comedic, how I describe it to people when I'm like meeting regular people that aren't in the creative space. I say it's a, cre- it's a guest-driven topical comedic show. So if somebody comes on, I'm not necessarily going to straight up interview them. But I, we are going to obviously direct the conversation to what they have going on. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm trying to my best to make it funny. And hopefully it's somewhat relevant to what's going on. So just try to have fun with it. I don't take it too seriously. I mean, I take the production element of it seriously and making mm-hmm. sure that it doesn't sound terrible or doesn't look terrible. But um, And I do get stressed out about a lot of things with it. But once I start, that's, that's it. it, bro. I'm just, I'm vibing, having that's fun. It. I will need a break real quick. We'll be right back. We'll be- Knocked off low key, yeah, you know me. Kick it with Tyree, hit it three like Kyrie. Forgot we signed on to this this tag team thing they were doing, and um, so I had to travel like probably an hour and a half to go see them. We interviewed them in the ring, which was really cool. But uh, all my wireless mics, the guy what? had helping me out. They were working. <laughs> He didn't have it fully plugged into the camera that we were like oh, the main camera that we were running audio for because the other two cameras were just picking up regular audio camera audio but we were running the mics to this one in the middle and yeah so then i just had to like try to make something out of the two other you camera can, sounds yeah true because then if you do you have shotgun mics on there or they didn't have shotgun mics either dude oh, so it was like we just had <laughs> we do because i didn't even have um it was so last minute i didn't have the guy that i normally shoot the show with and then uh, on top of that, I didn't have um, I didn't have any shock. I only have one, I only had one shock on mic at the time, and I just didn't even pack it because we were just like hustling out the door because um, it was a day I had to work, and I was like, damn, bro, yeah. I was so mad afterwards watching the files. That's that's the worst. Now at least when did it happen? I want to say it was like two years ago. Oh uh, yeah, I was gonna say if it was like recently. You can just throw it in, like the, they got the camera AI. audio. They got the AI stuff. You just throw it in. It literally fixes it. Yeah, they got I, some crazy stuff now. I be I do like social media stuff for work, uh, yeah. and, uh, and normally we're really using just like mics like this. And yeah. one time we forgot to just hit record yeah. for an entire forty minutes wow. of content that we just shot. Yep. And I was like, I look over because when you when you hit record on like the road, yeah. Uh, the road uh, boards. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, you can see that it's red when you hit record. Yeah. I, I look over, I'm like, that's green. Mm. <laughs> I, I don't say anything until he like walks out and I'm yeah. like, oh, we definitely didn't record it. Yeah. Any of that. Audio. That's, that's tough, dude. And I just put it in the AI and I, it no, you don't even notice it, honestly. Cause yeah. It's been posted all through the Especially social media. Especially for social media stuff, too, dude. Like, 
you can get away with a lot in that, you know? You can get away with way more than you think. Like, yeah. We, he'll mess up and like all type of stuff and I'll just... Just cut it out. Cut it all out. Yeah. Keep it going. You don't even notice that. It's, yeah. I've had some people, I do so, so I do some social media work too for people and like um, I've had, I'll be editing they'll be like, do I got to stay in the same spot so that like if I mess up, like what I'm like, no, dude, it's fine. Mm-hmm. Like if we cut it and there's a little jar, like... It's retention at that point. Like it's yeah. actually fine that there's a little movement every time I'm cutting because they you know. actually don't mind that. Like yeah. I think it works better on social media. Yeah, when you're cutting like in and super out. drawing. Yeah, yeah, dude. So people are like, "What's going on?" And yeah, like just subconsciously intrigued. you're yeah. just following it. Yeah, this happened. We just gonna keep talking. That's yeah, we can just keep going. We keep, keep going. it going. We're back though. We're but, back. Uh, We're back here. We're uh, already talking, so I was like, I'm just gonna keep it rolling. It was all rolling. Yeah, anyway, sorry, I've got so. a problem. I do that a lot. Um, we were what, were what were we talking last? Right before the the cut there. Uh, we we're talking about what were we talking about? We we're talking about. I'm so. Oh, confused. the podcast. You asked yeah. me about the podcast. And what I would describe about the podcast. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how would you describe it? Yeah, and I, I always tell people when I meet like people that don't um that have never listened to it and i'm trying to like give them a quick pitch i'm like it's a guest driven comedic mm-hmm. um somewhat topical podcast so current events going on we're going to try to make fun of them mm-hmm. uh guests coming on we're going to try to make the conversation about that but like the biggest thing is i just want to i want to have fun and i, I want to be smiling while i'm doing it and yeah. hopefully my guest isn't maybe the people at home too so that's the biggest thing is like can we have fun with this and hopefully make people laugh nice and it's Influenced by like the Joe Rogan podcast, the sure, yeah, uh, Brilliant Rogan, Idiots, Brilliant Idiots, um, uh, Flagrant, all those. Oh yeah, all the all the big ones. H three, I love the H three podcast too. Dude, they do a really really good job. Um, yeah. That's a big influence of mine too. I used to listen to them a whole bunch. I still listen to them a bunch, but yeah, I used to listen to like Brilliant Idiots and Flagrant religiously yeah. because I worked uh, when I first graduated and moved back. It was like twenty twenty, like. It was 2019, but like going into 2020 type okay. deal, yeah. And everything shut down, and yeah. I'm like, I can't get a job. Obviously, and yeah. I was like, I know where I can get a job at True Green. I'm mm. definitely gonna be able to get a job there. Yeah, I yeah. already worked there during the summer before, and it was my friend's like uncle who was the uh, like the manager. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna get a job. So I'm working there all day, ten hour days. What is it? What is it? True. It's Green? just like. Landscape. Oh, okay. You're so really you, just, you got the headphones in, fucking yeah. all day. You're not even supposed to wear headphones because it says it's, it's dangerous, dangerous for you to be in a, a yard to be using a weed whacker yeah. and listening to a podcast. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. And it, they just say it's dangerous for you to be having it on in some random person's yard. And yeah, I get know it. What's going on? Yeah, I, I did not care. Yeah, I wore headphones the entire time while I'm driving because they did not have radios in the cars and nothing. Yeah, it was ridiculous. So I, I used to listen to podcasts religiously. Every Tuesday and f- yeah, I, they were every Tuesday, I believe. I think so. Yeah, so. they were real good. I, I love their yeah. show. I haven't watched it as much anymore. Um, I still catch like some of the clips and stuff. Um, every once in a while, I, I watch Flagrant still quite a bit if they got like a big guest um, or something like that. But yeah, dude, they're just they're good. They're the they're, goats, bro. Charlemagne's one of the goats in radio, I think. So yeah, he's one of the goats for just like being the talking head goat. I'd say like he's oh yeah probably the first viral personality in a way like when it came Maybe, to the yeah. internet age like the yeah. way oh yeah like yeah. post howard stern yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I agree. so he was the first one that was like the things the questions he was asking was going viral the the reactions. antics bro yeah him he sniffing sniffing j-lo's chair whose chair was that it's not <laughs> you know yeah dude yeah he's He's yeah, hilarious. King bro. of that right there. Yeah. He's dude. healed now, he says. That's a, yeah, I know. I know. He says it all the time. <laughs> yeah. He's fucking, he's still hilarious though. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah. I just try to have fun with the podcast and and just try to enjoy myself. If I'm enjoying myself, then it's a win. All right. Right. Um, off, off topic. Uh, I always ask these questions. What are your top three movies? The top, my top three movies. Oh man. I don't know. You know, I recently in the last like year and a half, I finally, I've been, not purposefully saving these movies, but basically um, no one want, ever wanted to watch them because they'd all already seen them. Mm-hmm. But got to see Interstellar, Shutter Island, and Inception. Yeah, I'm not going to say those great. are my three favorite movies, but they're all amazing movies. Yeah. Um, man, I don't, Shutter Island might be might be in the top three there because that movie I wish I could see again for the first time. Yeah. Like I wish I could I erase. I remember watching it for the first time. Yeah, yeah. I just wish I could erase my memory of that and watch it one more time because <laughs> it was so good. Um, I'm a huge Star Wars nerd though too, so I love Star Wars. Um, What's the best one? 
Like oh, I don't know. For me, I love Revenge of the Sith. Yeah, that's the best one out of. I don't care what anyone says. Yeah, it's Revenge just, of the Sith is the best Star Wars. Like Anakin is that dude, bro, yes. and then he's not that dude, and Obi Wan shows him. Darth at the end, but yeah, dude, they just that movie's awesome. The the choreography and those the fights of the prequels, I think, is just so top tier. And I wish it's just that, a CGI that's trash in it, but you can get over it. You and know? there's a lot of it that does still hold up, and yeah. and a lot of um, I don't know, a lot of the criticism of those movies, like I think if, the storytelling in it and like the choreography and everything from that perspective, just making a prequel that's more stand heavy, up, dude, yeah. almost better. I won't say better, but it's. Yeah. It's close to better than originals. Yeah, that one specifically. I think yeah. the other two maybe not so. Much. I love I love the prequel. I grew up on all of them, so I love one. Like one through six are amazing. Not yeah. a huge fan of the Disney stuff. Um, yeah, the Disney stuff is uh, very. Eh. I just yeah. There's some stuff that's cool. Rogue One is sick. Mm. Um, the first couple seasons of the the Mandalorian, amazing. Great. Um, I haven't seen the most recent season because I was like, I'm not going to say trying anything. to wait. Yeah, wait it off. To, okay. to watch it, but yeah. now it's getting to that point where it's about to be a movie. It's about to be a movie, yeah. You got to get on that. I'll just watch it right before the movie comes out. There you and go. And then I'll feel better about better about right. it, you know? Yeah, that's fair. I hate watching it while... I hate watching things when it's popular for some reason. Like mm. when it's, when you know, it's you gotta, fresh You got to be extra else's. about it? You got to be like, nah, I'm not basic. <laughs> yeah. No, I Tyree's like, nah, me, bro. That's not me. I'm not with know, that crowd. And then you start getting everybody's re- reviews of, yeah. of it. And you're, you're getting... Everybody else's idea of what they think about the movie or yeah. what they think about the TV show. And I just wait it out. Like, mm-hmm. as soon as the TV show ends, I'm like, all right, that's it's fair. time for me to watch it now. Yeah, that's fair. I did that with, I, I'm like that with some shows too. Like, people yeah. are just like, they're just hyping it up too much. Like, I'm like, yo, the glazing is crazy. I, I don't need <laughs> I don't to, need the glaze. You know, like, I'm like, yeah. I remember, like, and one of them was, uh, have, you, have you watched The Boys on Amazon Prime? Yeah. I didn't want to watch that when it first came out. And I'm pissed that I didn't, bro. Because it, man, it, the boys is so good. It though. is like probably the best show on TV. I think. Yes, I think it's some of the best TV Amazon has ever put out. Yeah, and, that and Invincible. Mm-hmm. Are Invincible so is fire. amazing, as and well. it's coming back. The second second half of the second season is coming back. Mm. So That's, it just that. happened again. I heard it again. Ducked off low key, yeah, you know me. Kick it with Tyree, hit it three like Kyrie. Where we at? We're at. We're at the. Movies. Yeah, movies. Top three movies. Yeah. So I'll go, I'll, I'll put Shutter Island in there. I'll say Star Wars as Top one three, whole yeah. thing. Um, and then the Rocky, Rocky movies, I think. Yep. Yeah. I'd say um, Rocky 2, definitely an amazing movie. I think the first two, like as a pair, mm. as like a duology, is like perfect. Mm-hmm. Like I think it's like perfect, great, perfect, gritty like, storytelling. Perfect sequel. Into, yeah. Like, it's just, it's amazing yeah. part two. And then I'll say Creed 2 is really good as well. Even the first Creed is I thought, amazing. Yeah, I thought all the Creeds are pretty good. Um, third one, I was a little, I liked it, but it wasn't like the best. The third one to me was a little like, dude, how many times in this universe <laughs> is a random person going to get a chance to just fight, fight that, the, champion. the champion of the world? <laughs> like, could you imagine if Floyd Mayweather was just like, all right, who wants it? I'll fight some random kid. You know, you know my childhood friend from back in the day. It's just gonna get a and, random. Oh, and he's that good where he could win too. <laughs> yeah. You know, like just rant. I, I don't know. I mean, it was cool the way they did it. it. Was it was fun? And I thought some of Michael B. Jordan's directing was pretty interesting in the mm-hmm. fight scene. I don't know. Yeah, I thought it was cool. I thought it was pretty interesting. I thought it was a good movie, but I felt like it could have been better. You know, like I feel like with the next one, they he's gonna have a full, clear vision of what it should yeah. be. This is first time ever directing, so yeah, I was you disappointed. Can't that, like the greatest thing you've ever seen. Yeah, well, I thought he he did some really creative stuff. I think with like the fight scene and everything. I just what I was I was only disappointed too. I think in that uh, they couldn't work out the behind the scenes stuff with Sylvester Stallone and whoever yeah. that producer is that like won't let him get his share of Rocky or whatever. So like Sylvester was like, I'm not going to do it then. Mm-hmm. And you know that that kind of sucks because it doesn't make it's so weird. Yeah, it he, no he's his sense. trainer. He, he's. He's just busy the for entire, this movie. Yeah. The entire uh franchise, you know, it was Rocky yeah. pushing I, on to Creed. You know, like so I feel like they have to bring him back eventually. Yeah. You know, just to, you know, have some closure. Yeah. Like real closure with it. But Yeah. And he's good. I think I think they have, they carried the movie fine by themselves. But yeah, I just thought it was it was just weird to like that he's not there. I'm not saying it has to be about him, but it is weird that it's like he, he just trained him for scenes, two movies. Yeah, he just know? trained him for two movies and he's not there anymore. Like that's weird. 
Creed. Carl so Weathers good. just passed too, yeah. dude. That's super sad. The yeah. actual Apollo Apollo Creed, you know, that's super I feel rough. like that'll that might even like make him come back and think about it a little bit more. Yeah. So like take the pay cut, maybe and not he's not taking a pay cut, but uh. <laughs> lose his owner, maybe maybe be yeah. okay with not owning it and mm-hmm. do one more movie just to say goodbye. Just to be like, this is the end of yeah. me as Rocky in a way. Yeah. But, yeah. Those are interesting though. They're fun movies to watch. Popcorn movies. Especially the newer ones. So with um with your podcast, with music, how do you engage with fans and how do you um use social media to grow? Um I just try to be available as much as possible. I think consistency is like the biggest thing from mm-hmm. what I've seen. Um in the stretches that I I see growth and that I see like a lot of things moving. It's super exhausting, but it's like just being being in people's face every day, being like, yeah. yo, I got I, I post clips every single day, usually of the podcast, and then um post it on TikTok every single day with like the music and stuff like that. And I think like it does sometimes feel like, you know, you're not really moving as far, but then all of a sudden you'll look back and it's been like I don't know, 100 days or 90 days or something like that. And you're like, damn, three months went by. And I'm like, oh, I can see we are moving. Even though yeah. we haven't There's gotten our like, viral moment, you know, and, and we've had some viral moments. I shouldn't say that. But we haven't had like the one that tips the scale and now we're mm-hmm. some huge thing. It's like I just look at it as I'm building a catalog of stuff that hopefully I'm proud of. And um, you can keep cycling it and yeah. posting it and posting it. And yeah. And then, the, dude, it takes Contest one. forever. Yeah. And it takes know? one thing to go. Like if you get one clip from from this podcast or some other podcast you do this year, that goes viral and you have all this backlog and all these mm-hmm. clips and all these full length things and someone wants to know you and like they enjoy that one clip, they they have that now. Whereas opposed yeah. to like if you started it tomorrow and let's say you're like to use a word that's kind of overused sometimes, a plant, like you're an industry plant, like you had somebody pulling the strings that got you like a huge interview with somebody right off the bat. Like it's going to look a little different. It's going to look shady. And, and two, like, I don't know how much that would say about like you as an interview, like no one's going to know how good of an interview you interviewer you are, how much you've really like worked for that because Mm -hmm. it's like, you just kind of fell on your lap and they can't really become a fan of you right away because there's nothing else to be a fan of. It's like when if somebody has a one hit song, yeah. You know, if they if I have if I come out with my first song and that blows up, then it's like okay, if someone le- finds it and likes it, then they're gonna be like, well, I, I guess I just like this one song because there's nothing yeah. else to listen to. And so. that's that's the thing with like social media, you have to almost be a face in a way. Like even if you they don't even watch your content, if they keep seeing your face, yeah, it's like almost the reliability. They be like, they're like, oh, this guy must be. Yeah, I something. Think, what is he doing? Like, let's go look at his page. Let's go. And then it takes. I say it takes three to five times to actually get them to follow you. Yeah. It's oh yeah. Like once they see it about three to five times, they're like, "Oh, let's see what he's doing. We'll hit follow, yeah. and then we'll finally, you know, keep stay engaged with them." A lot of people aren't even like. Those there's a lot of like ghost followers too. Where it's yeah, like, I'm getting rid cool. of all them soon, man. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going through. I, I made a post kind of joking, but I'm not joking that I, I got this huge live show coming up that mm-hmm. I've been like really trying to push. Yeah, um, and it's at a brand new venue that Paps is is uh, opening yeah, up. Uh, by we can get into that. Yeah, yeah, this is a good segue into it. Uh, March 29th. March 29th. Yeah, Vivarium. This brand new. Uh, yes, is that brand the new. first? We're not the first or? show. I think uh, Wave Chappelle and somebody else are. Um, doing like a free show in a couple of days. Okay. That's going to be like the first show. And then I think there's a handful of shows before us, but then we're like one of the first Friday nights. Okay. Um, so I've been really pushing this show. And so like when you mentioned the ghost followers thing, I got a lot of people that maybe know me from like high school or know me from like the area I was originally from and stuff. Mm-hmm. They're just like, you know, they, they look they're, at all your stuff. They're just like there to like make sure. They just sure, want to check yeah. up on you. Make sure you make sure it hasn't worked out yet or yeah. to see if you, qu- if you quit yet, you know? Yeah, that's how I feel. And y'all all getting blocked if you don't come to the show. <laughs> <laughs> you know, all yeah. those people are getting blocked once the you know once this show happens. But but no, um, yeah, I've just been I'm trying to get rid of get rid of those, those ghost followers because that is a big thing. People are just kind of mm-hmm. passive with social media, and like yeah. you said, you gotta be in people's face a lot, and you gotta you can't just do it a lot. You also hopefully can do something well a lot because mm-hmm. that's the thing. If you do something good one time, 
that that doesn't necessarily mean you're good at that thing. It yeah, means it you maybe got lucky that you can do it, right? Yeah. Like somebody can bank in a three pointer for game. Mm-hmm. I'm still not passing the ball when we check up <laughs> next. Game. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you got to prove it consistently. And so, like I can even um, from my own experience tell you, like I've had clips from the podcast or even clips um, TikToks and stuff with the music, like go viral, do millions of views, and. Dude, don't get me wrong. There is a conversion mm-hmm. for sure, but like a lot of people think, like, oh, you got the you got this clip with ten million views. Like, why is it? Da, da, da. It's like, dude, okay, take one percent of that went yeah. and clicked my profile. Then one percent of that one percent maybe listened to a second clip. Then one yeah. percent of that one, and it just like trickles down. So it's like, yeah, sure, ten million saw this thing, but it probably like translated into I don't I mean I don't know off the top of my head, but you know maybe a thousand fans, like mm-hmm. maybe a hundred fans, that, people that actually are like say- tuning in every week. Out of that, like a million is only going to be like a thousand to a hundred, a hundred to a thousand. Exactly. That actually, that like, oh, like, this guy's good, in and like see what's going on, and then that million has to see it again and yep. again and again. Yep. To actually even, I won't say respect it, give but you a like, chance, man. Give you the respect as like the content creator or the podcaster to be like, okay, now I want to listen to this podcast and. Now I want to see what he's more like, see what he's about for real, yeah. and that's a struggle, honestly. Like I, yeah. I, honestly, if I could hire somebody to do it all, I would. Yeah. I don't want to do it because yeah. most of the time it's like, do posting on social media, making sure you post on every platform. Okay, now TikTok is taking down stuff that has more music than like thirty seconds. Yeah, and now all your stuff is taken down. Oh yeah, and you don't, you know, that's crazy. And now. Universal Music has a they, they yoinked all the that Universal stuff, man. Music Creators. Have you seen that yet? It's they, the Universal Music Creators. Uh, like it's like Artless, mm. but it's Universal Music. So they're so trying you pay to pay five ninety nine to be able to use their sounds on TikTok. Just use their sounds on TikTok. Yeah, and use That's their gonna sounds. Flop so hard. Oh, it's trash. As soon as I saw that, I was like, oh, I see the I see the play. I see why you take everything off, and now you're trying to make all the creators pay five ninety nine to have rights to I mean maybe there's something the we're not seeing but they yeah. got to be so brain dead if they thought that was a good idea dude. yeah it's a terrible idea the, the the let's say the six bucks you're gonna get from each of these people let's mm-hmm. let's say I mean because you know no one's gonna buy that shit yes. first off but let's say uh, even a chunk of them do is that revenue gonna be worth more than having 10 of your artists songs be viral at one point in time which universal because they own everything mm-hmm. they're all it's all you know any song that goes viral either it's is them, them yeah. or it's somebody that they're about to sign you yeah. know that they're like all right we're just going to pay for that one song we'll sign you to a one song distribution deal we yeah, want to own normally it, they did sign them to a one song distribution yeah. deal you just don't know it yet yeah and they they're pushing the virality of it yeah because it's real easy to, dude. to get it in people's faces these you don't two, know. You still think this is the independent artist, and then a couple months later, they're signed to they announce it, Universal. Yeah. And yeah. No, they've been signed there for six oh, yeah. months already. And these TikTokers, bro, it's crazy. Some of these TikTok, like I have a decent following on TikTok now. I mean, it's not crazy, like you know, but it's like some of these TikTokers will get offers for like good, like real wow. money, man, to like make like like it'll be a few grand to make three 15 second videos to one of your songs, and it's like. That's insane to think that about. That is insane. Yeah. For for 45 seconds of work, You're, they're going to get a grant, like 1200 bucks, 1500 bucks. I'll take it. You know? I wish it was me, bro. I wish it was I got to start thirst trapping. We got to start thirst trapping, bro. I got to start making up dances on Come TikTok on, bro. nowadays because uh, that's the only thing that's going to get you some cash that's what we got from to, TikTok. Bro. I mean, there's a lot of different ways that people are making money from like social media. I mean, YouTube is still the biggest payout yeah. you can get. Yeah, and even them, they're I, all these companies, dude. They're mm. gonna run into like eventually. There's gonna be a company that comes along that I, or at least I hope, that will take care of the creators for mm. real. Because even with YouTube and stuff, which is the best, you're right. Yeah. Right now, it, it's still it's worse than it was ten years ago. Yes, and it's worse it's, than it was. It's five way years harder ago. to like blow up on YouTube than it was five. Literally just five years ago. Well, and even the bag is worse because like now that's why all these people like like the Nelk Boys or whoever else, like that they own their own companies mm-hmm. aside from shit because YouTube will just be like, nah, you said too many bad words. We yeah, can't we can't you can't make it. any money off this. Even yeah, though that's why people are going to like kick and kick and rumble and now all this they're other not shit. posting on YouTube as much because they're just gonna stream instead. So people are gonna watch the stream that will watch their YouTube video, and then yep. they can post the edited stream on the YouTube, onto YouTube anyway, and still get a little bit of ads. Post sense. it on shorts, post it on all that stuff, and still get the same money yeah. that they were gonna get anyway. And 
Probably more. Yeah, probably even more. And yeah. Kick is signing people, so it's like they're actually getting like deals yeah. just to go over to you know, stream. You might as well, dude. That's yeah. like Ninja took that bag from Mixer and then like Mixer like declared bankruptcy like yeah. not long after. Like that's like all those like comedians that got like the Tubi deals <laughs> and then did. and then Tubi went under and so they never had to make their stand-up yeah. specials for Tubi and they just got like a they million dollars. Money, yeah. for nothing. I'll take it. You know? Dude, that's fucking I feel like I wish it's a right now it's such everything's such in a like shaky very place. Very shaky place, like on thin ice, because nobody really knows like how the money is being made in a way like there's no real like source of the money you know yeah what's so, it's, it's yeah you you go sorry so okay. like netflix how is netflix actually making money how is amazon actually making money from their like the video yeah. standpoint from the streaming standpoint yeah. how is youtube actually making money is ads Possibly, but like, well, I that feel mean, like that's yeah, everything that's is saying. coming back to like now we have to fund everything through ads. Now everyone has to have ads now. Oh, yeah. Like, I got the message from uh, Amazon like two weeks ago. I started, I started up and it was like, oh, well, if you don't want ads, you're gonna have to pay $19.99 a month. And wow. I'm like, I will take the not ads, I'm good. Yeah, as long as I can ship in two days. That's yeah. all that matters to me. No, it's crazy. It is crazy though. It's like uh, they um, these things all started out like really, really user friendly, and mm -hmm. now they're realizing like the the business models that they had weren't great. And I think they also don't realize too, like like Netflix and stuff. Like you just make really good stuff. They have the budget to make good stuff, and if they just make good stuff, they I feel like yeah. it would be more impactful. More people would continue coming back and like binging their shows and this stuff like that. For, but it's cheaper to make really bad reality TV. And people have people watching. And people really still bad. eat that up. So it's like, yeah. well, well, there's no incentive for them to make something really, really good. Like, let's just keep making a bunch of shit. And, and people and, are going to watch it anyway. Yeah. And, and then they, it's just that, yeah, people, they just, they're, right now, everything is just so much, um, or it's so dictated by like AdSense and, and what are advertisers willing to pay. And I do hope that, um, that some of these people, these like ad agencies, like grow some balls and let people like, like nobody, I, I don't know if there was, there used to be terrible things on TV, mm -hmm. absolutely horrible thing. Have you ever seen even radio? Like if you like ever watched or listened to clips of like the old Howard Stern show, like yeah, some it'd of the be awful. insane shit they would do yeah. like Beetlejuice and like whatever, like, and that stuff, there was advertisers on that. That's mm -hmm. how motherfuckers were getting paid, yeah. you know? Now and it's, it's like, just like a more sensitive, like, and I think that's state, fine. I know? think that's fine, but no one is going to like, I, I don't know. Like, I don't think anybody's going to cancel Dawn dish soap. Yeah. If for like they sponsor this podcast, crazy and I, podcast. Yeah, yeah, they sponsor this podcast, and I tell I on the podcast I was making fun of rappers I can't make layups with their left hand. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, Don's <laughs> no, like, oh, Don's, Don's, Don's like, we got to pull the sponsorship, bro. Yeah. It's not gonna, it can't do it. Like, I just think I don't know. I hope that you know more companies will kind of. I think it'll swing the other way, and then um, hopefully things will be a little bit better. But right now we're kind of swung the opposite way. So yeah, I feel like um, one day it'll like be equal. Because yeah. there'll be a lot of entertainers that'll be in charge of it, you know? Like, they yeah. will be able to make their own platform because they'll have their own money. And they would have inf invested in these companies that on the ground floor type deal. So they can kind of make it the yeah. way they want to. But getting even getting into that is, like, you don't know how the cookie's made. So, like, once you, like, realize, like, wait, like, how is the money getting made? And, like, where is the money? Then you're like, okay, where's the ads? And it's yeah, like, they're yeah. like, fuck the users. Yeah. Like, we need to make the money back for the investors. And mm -hmm. then it's just like, and nobody really trusts the creatives anyway. So it's like, they're not really taking our they're not taking advice. your input. And it's hard it's to get like, a hold of them, bro. Yeah. That's something that I, I'm like very passionate about that pisses me off. I don't understand how we've let like all these social media companies become basically they are like the public square now that's mm -hmm. where we do everything that's where we interact with the world that's where we get our news where we do all this stuff and we don't have like customer support no like if you like i've had i i had a thing so like i post um i post like ig reels every single day for the podcast like one at least one a day and um i like it i have my grid set up a special like yeah. i like it it's nice and clean it's like behind the scenes pick uh, pick with that person after the pod. And then we've got a little clip that I'll post on the main timeline from that week's episode. Yeah. But then we post every single day. 
So I'm not shooting a new episode every single day, yeah. but those clips are on the back end. And the Reels was like promoting like, oh, you can click to just share it to your Reels page and mm -hmm. not on your grid. And yeah. I was like, cool, because then it, it targets new people as opposed to just your followers, mm -hmm. which kind of helps helps you to it find you grow, grow to, new, to new people as opposed to like those ghost followers that maybe were just following you for no reason. And they recently like, it just, that button just went away. Like mm -hmm. four to like ago. remove the profile grid yeah. or the yeah, yeah, yeah. They, so you just can't do it. So yeah, it has to be on your profile. Yeah, now. and so like yeah. I had I was like looking up all these ways around. I would have to like delete the app like six times, and then like you can shake the phone and report a problem, but you can never just like <laughs> call somebody and be like, hey, is this what's this going on? Because they never like made on, yeah. an announcement like, hey, we've removed this. Yeah, they just uh, you just updated and then it's gone. And they did it. Yeah. So yeah. I was trying to figure this out. Like I'm guessing, and it's like I don't know. I just I just wish that that since we've allowed them. You'd think since we've allowed them to become as powerful as they are, there we, would be some a better like setup to like help us. You know? They can't afford to pay like a hundred people to be in a call, even though I got to wait four hours, dude. Like at least I could know for a fact like the solution. This is the solution. Mm -hmm. Instead, I'm guessing and trying to figure it out online on Reddit from some guy from eight years ago. Like that's <laughs> insane. That's, that's how hyped. everything is now, though. Like even like Adobe, even like. You can't Google the Everything. answer. You can't Google it. Like you got to Google whatever your question is, and then dash Reddit mm -hmm. to even get the right answer. Because you, you just you're Google not, it. It's it'll just be an like ad. a four year old answer, and you're like, "This doesn't work. It's not even. Mm -hmm. It's not even worth it now to try this because the whole software has changed. Yeah, it it doesn't work like this anymore. And now you have to search through hours and hours of youtube videos and God, it's ridiculous man yeah i dislike it so much yeah. man but we need it to grow you know mm -hmm. as creators and as um filmmakers podcasters musicians yeah that social media is necessary for us to grow so it's like yeah. they know they have a monopoly on that and there's nothing we can really do honestly. Yeah. yeah, what I'm trying to what I am trying to do and what I think a lot of the people that I look up to that have been successful in using mm -hmm. it is use it for what it's like use it as a it's a it's they're allowing you to do to promote your stuff for free there. Mm -hmm. But have something else. Yeah. You know? And so it's like I have this live show coming up, a lot of like comedians, right? Like they use their podcast. They make great money podcasting too, don't get me wrong, because they have yeah. good ads and they have whatever else. But um, that aren't their AdSense, but then they're trying to drive people to buy hard tickets. Yeah. That's where the money's at, you know? And so that's what I think you got to do is like, you got to have something that you got to basically take it on the chin that like, yeah, I know, you know, if I'm making a comedic podcast, I'm saying edgy shit or dumb stuff on it. Like, mm -hmm. I know I'm not getting much AdSense. So either I got to have sponsors that sponsor the show because they yeah. see how valuable the eyes I'm bringing is, or I got to have something else, whether that's merchandise, whether that's um, a live show, like I'm touring, whatever else, to be able to, to monetize that. Because you do deserve it. You know, if yeah. you get some clips that are doing millions of views or an episode that does good views, like YouTube's running ads on your shit. Mm -hmm. even, when they, even, when they you. Yeah, yeah. even when they demonetize it, somehow yeah. they can still find an, an advertiser that's willing to use it. Yeah. And um yeah, so I just think that's kind of silly. But, uh, but yeah, you just got to have something else to try to direct them to. That's yeah. what I try to do. Um, what would be your dream uh, collaborators or guests on the show? Guests on the podcast? Yeah. Dude, I think it would be sick to have Doja Cat on. Yeah. She, I feel like she would be very goofy and be, silly. I, it would be right yeah. up her alley, dude. Yeah. You know, comedic, crazy, comedic. I'm a musician, too, so it would mm -hmm. be, like, fun to have that. Um, I just think she's awesome. I think she's, like, super talented. Um, and she's hilarious as well. Um, definitely her. I think um, I'd I'd really like to I'd really like to interview Russ just because of the stuff that he showed me in starting all of this. And then uh, I'm trying to think maybe Schultz, maybe Andrew Schultz, but I don't know. But those would be those would be like the ballpark, you know. Yeah. I'm sure there's um, somebody I'm not thinking of off the top of my head. I know Doja Cat is always one, the first one that like pops in my head. But something crazy too. Give me something weird. I don't know. Yeah, you know, I, had a, I had a furry on not that long ago, and a he was furry? yeah, like he was awesome. The, in fur, like he came full fur suit, man. Basketball. Full fur suit. That's yeah, Jackson Fox. Shout out to him. He's legit. <laughs> um, no, we did the Milvery. So I don't know, man. Yeah, somebody, some something wild that out there. We did a mall Santa last year for Christmas. So something like that. Yeah, I like I like doing shit like that and just kind of seeing That's why. Wild. Maybe a clown. Yeah. I haven't had a clown on yet, so maybe That'd an actual cool. real clown would be cool. Um, yeah, something I don't, like that. I don't know any clowns. I, I don't, dude. I, well, I got introduced to one, and then he kind of backed out before we booked a date. So 
he didn't he wasn't feeling the the smoke he didn't want the uh, publicity no no uh, he didn't he didn't want people to know <laughs> so i was pretty i was bummed about didn't that want people okay. to know his story you ever had uh what's what's like the um you don't have to say don't name any names or anything i don't want to get you in trouble but have you ever left an episode and been like that was bad like um maybe not yeah. bad but you're like man they really i don't know why they wanted to do a podcast today because they did not have anything to say yeah um there's been a couple podcasts where i'm like yeah why did we do this like especially early early on and then they get mad at me like this one dude we talked for i literally asked him every single question i had 10 i asked him maybe 12 questions you know and y'all was getting one one word answers one word answers that's the best it it came out to the interview was 13 minutes (laughs) Shit, and I was dude. like, he was like, why is mine shorter than everybody else's? I'm like, bro, you ain't say nothing. How about you just listen to it? And you'll know yeah. why it's shorter than everybody else's. I wasn't else's. forcing like, you to say yes or no. <laughs> yeah. I love that. You'll be like, you know, you ask him like uh, sometimes, and, and it does, I think musicians sometimes mm-hmm. are the toughest with this. Yeah. Um, where I've had musicians on and like you're trying, because sometimes I just think that we take ourselves too seriously as musicians in mm-hmm. general. And I think that like they'll we'll do this thing where it's, it is vulnerable to share your art and then you're coming on a show and like somebody asks you about it and they just want to be like, like they want to be NLE Choppa or yeah. whoever, like they're looking up to that's the biggest that can just show up to an interview and be like, yeah, yeah. yeah. And like people are still gonna watch because it's that's NLE Choppa, yeah, he's huge, I love his music, whatever. They don't know you yet, bro. Yeah, you gotta- They don't know Darren Rita yet, so I gotta say something. I, mm-hmm. Be interesting for 40 minutes. Yeah. And and then maybe people will go check out the music. There's been a uh, one where he was a little, a little high. I'll that's, say that's good too. But like, like just like really high. But like I was like, are you? Is he sleep? But he answered he, every single he's question. He sitting there like this. Like, he was literally sitting there like that. But yeah. he would he, as soon as he <laughs> hear the question, he'd pop up and be like, the Undertaker and yeah. I'm coming up, rising <laughs> up like that. Yeah, That's crazy. Side. And if if you guys are watching, you know exactly who I'm talking about. I'm I'll not have to gonna go say back who and, it is, and find that. But you know exactly who it is. Uh, it's hilarious. funny because he answers every single question. You ever had anybody walk out? No, I've never had anybody walk out. Uh, I kind of, I kind of have people like be like get a call in the middle and like have to take the call oh. and then they'd be gone for like 45 minutes Shit. and then they'll come back and then we'll finish it. Damn. But, but I've never had someone like just walk out. The The craziest one was probably just, which, uh, any crazy. bad, like anyone where like maybe they didn't like a question. Or? No, I've never had anybody like get annoyed or like just walk out. I've had a couple where I've had to like delete them afterwards because mm-hmm. they said something they didn't want to say yeah. or like. See, I, I make people sign releases, bro. Yeah. We shoot it live. <laughs> so you true. say it, that bro, it, that's, that's on, on you, you, bro. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. yeah, they. I've had a couple of people like that. Like, can you delete this? I've had this one dude, literally, I literally thought we was about to get in a fight. Like one time, like, cause he saw me afterwards. So he was like, I asked you to delete that, blah, blah, blah. Oh, wow. I'm like, hey. You can send it to be on my show, bro. It's <laughs> yeah. my show. I can do what <laughs> like, I want. With I can it. do what I want with this yeah. content at no, this point. Like, you asked me to do this. I had the same it thing. It wasn't the opposite. You know, I never reached out to you to do it type deal. So it's like, if you want me to delete it, like. That's up to me if yeah, I want to if do I it or not. To. Like, yeah. that was some, it probably had, I used to only post on like, uh, I never posted early on YouTube. Mm. So I only posted the full interview on Facebook Oh, because okay. it was getting way more views than like posting on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. I was getting like 10 views on YouTube and it's like, yeah, I'm done posting to YouTube because it's you, getting yeah. like 13,000 on, on yeah. Facebook. So I'm like, oh, I'm just going to post the full thing there. Why I not? post clips everywhere else and it worked out that way. So like it was only on this. So I used to post on two different pages. So I had to kick it in with Tyree page and then my old company name used to be Pope Enterprises. Okay. But I... I realized there's a million Pope Enterprises out there. All right, so I was like, you, I, can't, so you I don't have the rest. I yeah. was like, all right, 23 Productions, this, this is it. So it was on an old page. I actually deleted it off everything. Oh, okay. But he saw it on that page and was like, you never deleted blah, blah, blah. I was like, bro, I don't even have access to that. See, <laughs> like, yeah. I don't even use that page anymore. So, like, my bad. Get like, over but it, man. You please, I just, chill out. <laughs> I don't know, man. My thing is, like, I just, if you can't, if you... 
agree to be on i i feel passionately about this too because yeah. i've had people reach out to me and like on some bullshit trying to like hey i'm, I'm trying to do this now for work and and i really appreciate if you could remove this because i don't like what i was talking about i'm like okay well you chose to talk and i was being real nice with this person mm -hmm. i took their last i was like here's what i can do man i was like i'll take i'll untag you from everything mm -hmm. i'll have my editors go back and and make sure that there's no tags and like the YouTube you. metadata yeah. or anything of your name or anything. So he doesn't come up if someone searches you for a job. I was like, but I'm not removing the clip. I'm not removing the episodes. I was like, you decided to talk about what you wanted to talk about. And that's on you. And that's on you. I didn't force you to come on the show. You asked to be on. And I didn't force you to, to say what you said. You said mm -hmm. what you said. If you say what you, you got to say not what you say. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Or just, or. The it, job's going to hire you or not, you know. No job. Like, I don't, like. What job? I, I'm just trying to picture in my mind, like even a higher up position. Like I've, I've gotten offers from for nice jobs. Like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm done. I've met with cool people. It's like nobody is gonna like pull up the laptop, swing it around, and it's gonna be like some YouTube clip of you making a joke <laughs> on a podcast and being like, I've never seen that. Ever can we? In my I don't life. know if we can trust you, so and so, because of this clip. And then like, any, let's say you, it's something that is egregious or something that is really effed up and cancelable. It's like, you can, at it's the very least, it. you don't got to stand out. You can just be like, yeah, that was me then. That's not me now. Mm -hmm. And if they don't want to work with you, then that's their choice too. But like, just be a fucking, be an adult. Thing, about it depends it. on what you're doing, honestly, because I've never, I do mostly film stuff. So they've never been like, oh, you do all. I have had jobs where they're like, we think that you're, say. you're we think that what you're doing is too like gonna be distracting in a way like to what you're doing here oh okay. and it's like, like oh yeah you just that's have different. too much going on yeah, yeah that's like, different. Oh, you have too much going on we don't feel like or they say like you're overqualified you're I've gotten that too. That pisses i'm me like off. over how can you be over i'm just looking for a job bro just give me a job yeah <laughs> no because they want somebody that they want somebody that they know needs that job and yes can't. and they can manipulate yeah. into working crazy hours and doing all types of stuff like bro i will work the hours too yeah, yeah. It's like I worked. I'm trying to get a check right now, bro. Yeah, like, I just let me need the check. Yeah, I just think yeah, that's I a, goofy. I struggled with that for like a whole year, like yeah. of like applying to like the corporate type video jobs, and they just being like, "We think you're like too overqualified," and like I did for like four, same thing for like yeah. four months last year, where I was yeah. like, I moved to the city, and it was like, dude, I couldn't get anything. I was even trying to do like radio stuff, and you know, I got years of podcasting now in my belt and some radio people stick their nose up in podcasting mm -hmm. they don't think it's the same thing at all but it's like i know how to be an on-air person mm -hmm. and i was also i was so i was applying for these on-air positions um and on top of that i was applying for like production stuff too i'm like dude i do all i produce my own show myself yeah and oh. some of these radio shows i'm like we're doing better numbers than you i'm like i don't think it would hurt to hire okay. me and have pay me 15 an hour, you know whatever just some cheap 15 an hour or something like that to do this and maybe i make the play is better. Yeah. You never know. And it's like, I'm just trying to do something that I don't hate mm -hmm. for part-time while I'm building my own company. Yeah. And it's like, and they're like, no, you're overqualified. I'm yep. like, all That's, right. Because they know you're going to leave. They know eventually if your own thing takes off that you'll leave. But it's like, it's a part-time position. That's, everyone's going to leave this position. Everybody is going to, it's a revolving job. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know. So it, I, I'm sorry that you, you had to go through that because I've, I've felt that before. It's annoying. Yeah. Very it's, annoying. Now, and it's uh, a lot of different, like, avenues you can get into just doing film, podcasts. Like, there's a lot of jobs that you can qualify for yeah. that you don't even know, like, the rhetoric for it or, like, the names yeah. that the corporate oh, yeah. jobs put it under. Yeah. And it's like, you got to, like, damn, look it up. Like, oh, it's not video editor anymore. It's a... Uh, or it's post-production specialist. Yeah. Post-production, uh, yeah, visual specialist. <laughs> it's and you're like, visual specialist. Right. Or I'm like, come on, it's just video editing. It I'm says art videos. proficient at Premiere. Yeah. Yes. Yes, <laughs> like, exactly. That's video editing, man. Yeah. Post-production assistant or editor. It's never like just video editor. Like for the things, if you see a job and it says video editor, most of the time it's like, gonna be the worst oh yeah time worst the worst hours the worst like people sometimes the way they treat you if it oh, just yeah. says video editor i've seen oh, if yeah. it says something like post-production uh different like different wording to the, how they say because they're trying to weed people out yeah like they want like they want to scare people yeah. off you know that's, it, it that's... seems too big you know like post-production i don't know anything about post-production yeah, yeah. when it's really just 
video editing just at the end of the day. Color grading, that's it. Yeah. Yep. And it depends on if it says like certain programs, obviously you you're not you're not gonna get it done if it's a certain program, but it is yeah. what it is. Yeah. We can uh keep moving with the question. I actually wrap it up with this question. Um, how do you want to be remembered as a podcaster, as a musician? Um, hopefully remembered as uh, just honest and, and maybe maybe a little funny would be cool. Mm -hmm. um, but no, I just I just try to be me and and enjoy what I do. And as as long as I, the art that I'm making, whether whether it's music or if it's podcasting with specific guests, as long as I'm being myself and I feel like when I leave an interaction that I I, I was as true to myself as I could have been in that moment, then uh, I feel pretty good about it. So that that's what I, I try. I guess I would like to be remembered for is just somebody who who is kind, who is trying to make people laugh and is having some fun while he's doing it. So that's but, dope, man. But yeah. Well, I appreciate you for coming on, man. Thank you. I appreciate for you, man. Coming on, kicking it with me. Of course, we're kicking it with Tyree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I want to before before we wrap. I just want to plug real quick. I got this big show coming up. Yeah, I want to just your show, man. Just plug give me, give me two seconds here. On. Your we, social media. Do you, that's the camera. There, right here, right here. Darren Rita on everything. Uh, Spotify, Apple Music, uh, Instagram, YouTube, all that stuff. TikTok. Um, the Detox Podcast is the, is the podcast I host every single Monday night, live at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. Um, and you feel free to jump in the live chat, say what's up to us, say something dumb. Um, we'd enjoy that. But I've got a huge show March 29th at uh, Pabst Theater Group's newest venue, Vivarium, that uh, its first show hasn't even been played yet as a, at the yeah. time that we're recording this. Um, it's a Friday night. Don't got to take off work. If you work a regular nine to five, um, pop out. It's going to be all live instrumentalists. So uh, I, I know a lot of hip hop, a lot of my friends that do hip hop shows are sometimes just doing like ad libs over their tracks and stuff like that. We wanted to try to take things up to a different level by uh, having actual like live music. So guitarist, bassist, drummer, piano, all that stuff. Some other special guests as well. Yeah. Um, so if you enjoyed this conversation, uh, feel free to check out any of that. And if you do um, listen to my podcast and maybe you're you're just catching me on this because I posted about it, um, buy your tickets already or I'm going to blow up your house in Minecraft. We can say that because I said <laughs> yeah, Minecraft. This is Minecraft. Yeah. 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 I yep. will do it though. Uh, but no, I appreciate you having me on for real. Yeah, thank you for coming, man. Thank you guys for tuning in and kicking in with Tyree. And we out. Ducked off low key, yeah, you know me. Hey. Kicking with Tyree, hit it three like Kyrie.